I'm going to talk about a hot topic, sexual indoctrination of the kids or sexual programming of the child mind done by the school system in many, many countries uh, which follow a, a doctrine imposed by a certain a international organizations which took this job which is not their job, is the parent's job, took their, this job with a very sneaky purpose. Uh, by the way, uh, you know, we live in a fake world when you see someone uh, recording themselves on a nice backdrop, like, uh, could be a bad sheet, could be some uh, software that fools your mind thinking that, oh yeah, those are the pros those are the pros, they know what they are talking about. But telling you, even the schools, even the teachers have no idea what they are talking about. It's blind leading the blind and um, they are just robots working for a system. They get paid, they go home and they don't give a crap. Some they do, but they were uh, threatened losing their job if they go against an agenda. So. Uh, before I get into this topic, I'm going to touch a side topic about the cocksuckers. But it's nothing to do with uh, people of certain sexual orientation. No, I'm talking about a, a certain co corporate workers who would go with any policy be, uh, imposed by their corporate environment, their corporate uh, leaders. Uh, when the corporate structure and management changes, these cocksuckers would also shift their views according to the new orientation, new wind. And this type of behavior, this type of people would see me as a rebellious type of person who is trying to change the ways that we are imposed by, imposed by the smart people above, right? Because they think that I'm one of those uh, thinking differently. Yes, I, I decided to think differently. And um, those people would flag my video. So flagging my video because it's inconvenient for their beliefs, beliefs that were programmed in their minds by their uh, corporate environment or maybe their uh, political party they belong to. So these people, uh, these cocksuckers, uh, have emotional needs uh, since the childhood. They try to belong to a group. They try to belong to a higher power, higher system. Whatever system is feeding their bellies, right? So they are uh, this survival mode and Whoever feeds their belly, their family, whoever helps them ensure their survival needs, they will go with that. So they are shifting all the time. See, okay, this political party gives me more, I'll go that way. This company gives me a better salary, I'll go that way. So they don't have a a personal identity and to them uh, these new ways of uh, indoctrinating kids to believe that they don't have a real personal sexual identity it's okay because it identifies to themselves who they are they are like okay uh, I identify with the group or with the people in power who give me the means of survival because I was programmed as a kid like that. So my parents always wanted to be in control and they told me that I have no value, no identity, I'm a nobody, I'm a piece of crap. And myself, I grew up with this type of lack of self-confidence, self-power, and I go with whoever gives me that feeling that they are in charge, they are powerful, and I'll suck, suck their cocks because it serves my needs. So that's a side topic about cocksuckers, including people in uh, deciding the policies in YouTube and stuff like that. So 
probably this video is going to be shut down, right? So uh, share it, share it before it goes. Share it before it goes because uh, yeah, I had two videos shut down, not saying stuff, not going against COVID. They said they said uh, something. Uh, uh, I went against some um, uh, COVID uh, policy thingy, which was like uh, written in 2020, outdated stuff. But I didn't touch that. Like, I, I didn't go into the depths of that. But still, someone flagged it, and I didn't argue. I said, fuck it, it's, uh, it's okay. So um, I'll record it uh, maybe for a different platform sometimes, sometimes. So parents, parents who lost their authority over their children. And it started a long time ago. It's not like uh, new stuff. Uh, if I look at Canada, you actually can't decide for your child when the child reaches 14 years. So at 14 years of age, uh, the child has the authority to, de to decide about their medical uh, treatments and stuff. Like if, if the school tells them you should vaccinate, right? The kid says, okay, yeah, I, I don't want to die because they told me uh, I could die if I don't vaccinate. So the kid won't listen to you as a parent. So you are obligated by law to take care of the kid, uh, ensure the kid has uh, living conditions un uh, under the Canadian standards. Uh, you have to provide a roof, provide food, shelter, stuff. But you cannot intervene in their decision about their uh, um, into their uh, medical uh, choices, uh, treatments, and anything like that, in including their diet. You can't. You can't do that. It's like a stupid. So you have an obligation as a parent, but your right to be a parent and uh, decide for your kid what you believe is right according to your beliefs, uh, maybe your spiritual, re religious beliefs that work for the last 3,000 years. Let's say you're from India and uh, your, your old ways did work for thousand generations, right? And it worked fine. Uh, nothing, nothing is wrong with that. Uh, to believe in your stuff, right? It's totally fine. Uh, it did not cause your 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 uh, ancestors' beliefs did not le lead to a, your country extinction. It never did that. So, there's nothing wrong with that. If your country uh, made it. So many thousands of years, probably your ways are good ways. And now you go to a new country and you go to America, let's say, and they tell you, you know what, no, 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 you can't do that. You can't do that. You have to do our ways. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, you are on there. You are a guest, kind of. Even you became a citizen, you are a guest. But I'm telling you, this is a, a land full of sinners. Full of sinners, and it does not go in the right way because it follows only the the people in charge who are uh, guided by evil thoughts, evil idea, ideology. It's all uh, surrounding money. It's like money is the center uh, element of people thinking. Because people are chasing money, people are dreaming of money, people are working only for money. It's nothing about your talent, your dedication to God, your, I don't know, dreams and stuff like that. No, everything is like money, 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 money. And people don't understand what the money really is. And, but they chase the money like, uh, because it, it was a created a, a false sense of security and happiness around the money, having money. And now people chasing the, their own happiness actually uh, chase the money. It was artificially programmed in generations' minds. So now 
uh, for a number of generations, people were disconnected from God. Right? Lots of people were disconnected from God. And now uh, moms or mothers have to take a job in order to pay for that dream, to chase the happiness. And she takes a job, and now she's disconnected from the, from the babies, disconnected from their kids. And her role as a mother is diminished. It's like uh, they are mothers for 10%. Before, they were 100% mothers. And when the baby is six months old or maybe one year old, the, the role of the mother drops to 10% or 20% because she goes to uh, chase the dream, chase the money. And it, she gives the role to a daycare, which is made of some robots uh, following uh, some guidelines. Uh, maybe a, a babysitter in the, the best case scenario, when the babysitter probably puts some heart into the child education. And I wonder if uh, these uh, people in charge are going to impose uh, rules to the babysitter, you are supposed to teach your kid you care for a, this rules, this way, this way. That would be really intrusive, in a, a, like a really, uh, I don't know, outrageous for me. And uh, so the mothers lost their rights of being moms, like uh, emotional moms. I mean, they can be a mom Right, they come here, come home, uh, dump some cereals into the bowl, some milk that takes like 30 seconds, uh, heat it up in the microwave, uh, the, the quick life. Uh, the kid is dumping something quick, 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 because let's go, let's go, let's go, like uh, we have to be at school. It's all rush, 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 rush. No time to connect to the kid, to talk, to, to connect at the emotional level. There's no time for the moms, because she is busy working like a slave for someone else, exploiting her, and chasing the happiness, which they never reach happiness. They never reach happiness, because some people, evil people, will always raise the bar, always raise the bar. And by the time they try to get some better salary or almost pay the mortgage, uh, they realize that the new generation of robots, like a programmed robots, they come in fast and furious and they take their jobs. And it's another level of stress for these moms. And they have no emotional energy to connect with their babies, their children. So the children goes, grow up because that's life, you know. Nobody, like, uh, life is not waiting for you. And you realize that you don't know your kid. It's like, uh, okay, my kid is speaking uh, English now. If you're uh, from India, let's say, or from uh, Asia. It doesn't matter. I'm just uh, making up an example. Uh, your kid is speaking only English. And I know from my kids. So I'm, I'm talking my, uh, my uh, backcountry language, my tongue, mother tongue language. And the kids are answer, replying in English, and it's like, a, but everyone goes to the same. So they, they talk to someone who is being reprogrammed. Uh, I have one of my kids who speaks back in uh, my language, uh, because she wants to be polite and also she wants to uh, keep her brain uh, uh, active by speaking a second language for her, because her uh, main primary language is English. She was born here, and uh, she's speaking English like every, every person who was born here. And she's speaking French and uh, learned Japanese and Korean. Uh, of course, the, she doesn't know those languages well, but she's entertaining her, I mean, uh, keeping her brain active. And... Uh, but most kids, like I said, they reply in uh, English and uh, the parents tend to think, okay, I was dreaming to have a kid uh, like me or something. Most kids, most, most parents dream that way, like uh, uh, to raise kids.
kids that take over uh, and do better, do better. But when they get here, they see, okay, uh, this is a different world, uh, like a different kid. It's like uh, maybe they look like me or my husband, but uh, I don't know, Think, thinking differently and now they come from from school with uh, all sort of attitude, they have a different, beha- different behavior. Now I, I look at the fashion, can't stand to see my daughter big cleavage and uh, uh, tight pants, you know, makes me feel, I don't know, insecure or uh, feel bad, feel mad, or the, uh, lots of different emotions when the moms who come from different cultures see this reprogram kids not having emotions and they think, okay, uh, okay, whose fault? My kid is not really loving. My kid is just all about games and music and stuff. So uh, lots of parents think they lost control. It's not about control. As a parent, you're not supposed to be a control freak. But when you see that you are raising uh, someone who is totally different, totally, totally different, like uh, not like your grandmother, not like you, not like your husband, not like... What is going on? And you realize that actually the school took control. It's not the society. The society, you are fine with that. That's why you move to another country in case you are from, uh, if you are from different country and you move to North American continent. I, I, I touch this topic for the immigrant families. But the same thing happens to people who were born here. They, uh, let's say, they are here for the last 10 generations. And they realize that the newer generation is like, uh, have these weird concepts and ideas that have nothing to do with who you are. And you try, as a parent, you try to inspire, because that's, that's the thing, that's the way uh, the uh, new generation learn from their ancestors. They look up and they they use these people as a people of trust, which are people as their source of information to copy and use for their uh, growth, their learning, their, uh, I don't know, uh, young adult startup experience. But you look at the kid and say, you know what, yeah, uh, my ways won't fit. My, my ways uh, are useless to this kid. So my kid is, let's say, 16, 17, is already thinking differently. Or now you have, let's say, 10 years old kid, and they teach the kid sexual education in school. And you are concerned because, let's say, you are Muslim, uh, as a background, uh, spiritual uh, background, and you think this is not normal, this is not okay. My grandma would turn upside down in a grave knowing that uh, I allowed my children to be taught uh, sexual identity at that, that young age. And it's scary because now the kids uh, are like a sponge, they are curious. And the kids are at the time, especially like a six years old, seven years old, they have no idea what, what's going on, who they are, what's their role. It's, they are in, like a new on earth, like guests. Uh, you, you can say that. You, they are guests. I don't, we are all guests on earth. But they are new guests. And they have to be offered or given a hand to accommodate here. And the wrong people give these, peop- these kids, these guests, a... Uh, uh, wrong information, right? It's like a, they want to integrate in a society and the society tells them, yeah, you integrate if you follow my rules. Rules made by evil people with a purpose of dividing people into smaller groups. So that's one of the main goals. They, they come up with this type of uh, tricky, sneaky uh, concept that... 
being class inclusive is part of an advanced culture and society. That's a fucking bullshit. Nothing to do with that. So uh, people are, can be inclusive, inclusive with, uh, let's say, handicapped people, maybe gays, lesbians. Okay, we we try that and yeah, works fine. Yeah. But now they want to divide people even even uh, smaller groups, so they are easier to control. And I'm not making stuff up to scare you or something like that, but I'm saying, if you are disconnected from the kids, probably it's a lost battle. But if your kid is only five, six years old, just uh, pay attention to the trends, pay attention where the world goes, and it's your duty, it's your God-given duty or obligation to uh, teach your kids about who they are. Teach your kids values. So your ancestors ancestor values that work for, worked for you and will work for your kids. Even they are in different cultures, still humans go by, by the same survival rules. As long as you follow the country laws. But now the thing is, uh, politicians are pushing to change certain laws, including freedom of thinking, religious freedoms, and stuff like that. So the funny thing is that even the uh, spiritual leaders are shifting their views according to the politicians. It's like a politician tells the spiritual, lead, the spiritual leaders how to think and how to push a, a doctrine to their followers. And now I'm going to touch something sensitive for a lot of people. Uh, last year, uh, I'm looking into a, a, a way how to uh, avoid vaccination. I, I don't want to vaccinate, and, but I was uh, asked to be vaccinated, to get vaccinated. Uh, so I, I, I don't want that. But I was looking, like um, thousands and thousands of people, uh, they were looking into ways how to avoid vaccination. So I could... Uh, continue my work and uh, there was not such a uh, big pressure in my workplace but we have uh, customers who uh, require this type of stuff uh, at the time they require vaccination and uh, I didn't want my comp my uh, my employer to uh, to choose someone else to do my work just because I'm not vaccinated so I did dig into a religions, like which religions are um, supporting people's freedom of choice. And I was told that, yeah, maybe uh, Jehovah's Witnesses. And I'm going into their website. This is like a funny stuff. I'm going to their website, and right on the front page, there is a video. There was a video, now it is, is gone. There was a video of a guy, sort of a, a guy in his 50s, 60s, uh, round, a little bit, like a well-fed, uh, probably one of the top guys at that organization, well-fed and uh, showing some sort of a authority, but with a, sort of a sneaky, nice, nice voice. And he is talking with a, with a tone, I thought, this guy is talking like he is talking to the handicapped people. And he's talking with a voice that, you know, to me was funny, but I think the, that religion followers believe that he is sincere. And uh, he's saying, you know, the Bible said that we need to follow our chosen leaders. It's important to follow our chosen leaders. They guide us. And I thought, what the fuck is going on with this guy? He's talking, he thinks that every Jehovah's Witness is a stupid creature. He thinks that way because he's talking to people like he talks to some handicapped people. And it was done, like, I, it was no way to join that thing just to get uh, uh, something that helps me avoid vaccination. So 
to me, I was looking into ways, probably not very orthodox stuff, if you think that I tried to go around the system. Yes, I tried that because it was not fair and it was no moral and not legal to uh, uh, push this mandatory vaccination. The same thing uh, how is immoral now to push this uh, agenda of indoctrinating the kid about they could be transgender, they could be this and that and that. So they make people who are already confused, these uh, new guests into this world are confused about who they are and they make them even more confused. So being confused, I like the cocksuckers I talked earlier, not having a proper identity and self uh, power, right? So they cannot decide on their own because if the people don't know who they are, they will always look up to be told who they are or not who they are, uh, how to do things and what to do. So if you know who, who you are, you know you have some power, you have some values, you have an identity, you have some morals, you know, you have a set of values you, you are guided by. But if you don't have those because they programmed you as a kid in the school, so you grew, grew up with no, no clear identity, then you are powerless. And those people in power, that's, that's the thing they want. They want powerless Robots, powerless robots who would do anything, like uh, all, every, anything they, would, they are told. Same thing I, I said about cocksuckers uh, working for a corporate environment. And it, it's funny to see these people with a tag, you know? Like I go on the places and I see these people dressed like office people with a tag hang at their neck, around their neck, on the chest. And at first, when I saw this, I thought, wow, he must be some official. But now I see more and more of those. This is like some dull person, dull person, no personality, like a person who goes to the office, like just going for a job, that's it. And uh, having some tag is like a being marked a that this person belongs to some organization or something. It's like uh, you have a tag, but now because these are, uh, like I said, power, powerless people, while wearing the tag, they are proud of working for some big corporation or something because they associate their lack of power to someone who is powerful, like uh, the people who handle big, big amounts of money or have like a big corporate or office or something like that. So not having the power you make you want to associate like, uh, oh, yeah, I know this uh, doctor. I know, oh, I know the lawyers. Oh, I know somebody. And you, they throw the, some names into the conversation and stuff like that. Those are powerless people. And same thing with this one. Hang, you know, that's okay to have the tag around your neck when you walk in the, in the office so you open some, some uh, fob, your fob, you open some doors and you get into your office back and forth. That's, that's totally okay. But there are people wearing that stuff on the bus, you know, coming home. With, like I saw a neighbor at the laundry, in a laundry room with one of those hanging around the neck. But I'm looking at it. It's, it's a guy who, has, who is limited, yeah, limited, but he wants to show, yeah, I'm a, I have an office job, right? Yeah, you're a little robot that's sucking. And um, same idea, these people are programmed to believe that they have to suck it so they can keep their jobs. That's the, the programming. And now they want to, these people above the system, they uh, want to program the new generations to think and act like robots. And I see that uh, like a Korean kids, like uh, machines. Lots of Chinese kids, same thing, like machine. You know, I see, so my neighborhood is like a change. It's like a, maybe 60% are from China. It's uh, people renting or they bought apartments in my area, uh, expensive stuff. But when I look deep, I study them Beside having uh, some cool life, they are powerless. They are like, uh, if you take their, their cars, the, if you take their apartment, or uh, all this cool stuff and toys and gadgets, and leave them naked on the, on the forest, they die. 
two days later they, they, are, they kill themselves. Some people, if you take just the phone, take the phone away, they feel powerless. You take their games away, feel powerless. Yes, so I let you go. Take your parent job back before your kid is too old and it's too late. I'm telling you, it's up to you what you do, but it's going to affect you when you get older. And you won't like it when you are being dumped into a hospice or some sort of a place with no love, with no emotion, people around, just like you will see some robots, maybe they might visit you, maybe, maybe. And if they visit you once a year, there will be like a 20 minutes visit and see, okay, if you are alive, why you are still alive, because it costs me money, okay, that, that would be the attitude and it will cry, it will cry in your heart and you will think, but they will, they might tell you, mom, I don't know you, you did not raise me, school raised me, I only know my, some idiot teacher in three, grade three or something, that's why I'm, I'm unhappy because of the school, but also you were not around, you were not around, right? So just keep that in mind, tell you later, bye-bye.